Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. All right. Amen. We the sons of thunder Israelites is our hearts prayer and desire that all Israel be saved. All right, I'm your brother Judah. Hey, brother Yaqua. Brother Ahara. All right, that's Captain Yonatan. I don't know what he got going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, his, his uh, screen froze. Yeah, I think his screen froze. You good, Yonatan? I don't think he can hear us. Shalom, shalom. All right, come, come, come. There we go. A little delay, a little delay. It's all good. All right, man. Hey, man. First and foremost, we give our honor and glory to you. How about Shemi All right, for allowing us to come back with another Thursday night lesson. You already know what it is. Go ahead and like and subscribe. All right, all right. share the video as soon as you come into the building. We talked about this on Monday, man. It don't hurt to hit the like button so we can catch the algorithm. All right, we don't care about likes. We don't care about None of that. Just, just hit the, the like button, catches the algorithm, and sends it out to other people. So the more likes we have, the more likely this video will be shared to others. So go ahead and hit the like button when you walk in, when you come into the building. All right, hey man, on the No Carolina channel, we just had a, a premiere on, on one of our segments called Street Talks. All right, where the brother Yonatan went around and we talked to some people in the city about what their uh, sense of community is. What their mm -hmm. definition of community is. And that's the thing, you know, amongst our people, we 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 don't know what community is. You know what I'm saying? We think community is just a place that you live, but we don't we don't know that we have a sense of community or a definition of community. And Esau has his own definition of what community is. And uh he adheres to his definition of community, and we see why there's a difference between ours and theirs. All right, so go check that out when you get a chance. Also, make sure you subscribe to the newest channel, SOT San Francisco, with the brother uh, Shaquat and Yahawda. All, all right. right. And be on the lookout for the other SOT channels that are about to pop up here soon. All right. Now, let's get into it, man. This is going to be another offshoot of the class that we, we had, you know, we kind of had to cut short last week. All right. But the title of this class is Nor Effeminate. Nor Effeminate. Matter of fact, let's pull that precept. Uh, give me one second. Well, Y'all know what I want. First Corinthians. Uh, First Corinthians chapter six and verse nine. Let's bring that out real quick. Uh, this is the book of First Corinthians, chapter six and verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Now hold on. It said, "Know ye not that the unrighteous." Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All right. Now let's keep reading. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. No what? Nor effeminate. Uh huh. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Uh huh. Nor thieves, nor covetous. Nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So none of these people, all right, are going to inherit the kingdom of God, right? But what we what we are, uh, no, what we're gonna, uh, we know we're gonna hop on today is the effeminate man, right? Because we know we a lot of us came out of these churches, man. And I, I, I've been thinking about this class for maybe a year or two that I wanted to do a class on this mm -hmm. because the Christian church loves to say, I'm saved. I'm going to meet the king. I'm going to heaven. And when I get in front of Jesus, oh, I'm a shout. Yeah. Right. Now, we got to <laughs> think about <laughs> we got to think about the characteristics of Christ. And then we got to think about the characteristics of what the Christian church is. Uh, Molding our men to be is the Christian church molding our men to be masculine or effeminate? Right. Well, let, let's look at something real quick. I only got one quick video, man. I know a lot of y'all gonna be like, "Yo, this is madness." Y'all gonna laugh, whatever. But let's think about the man that Christ is. Right. Let's think about the man that Christ is, and the characteristics of Christ and his father. 
All right, let's just take a second to ponder on the characteristics of Christ, right, and his father, right? And let's think about what we're about to look at right now. Let me know y'all can y'all can see my screen. Come on, well, we can see yep. it. Now, straight man. You see that <laughs> already. You see, we got this pastor with his cape on looking like Count Dracula, mm-hmm. right? And then you see we got multiple men sitting here on the on the on the you know the outskirts of it, right? Uh-huh. Now, this is what they say that they're gonna meet Jesus with. When he comes back and and, and he, they're saved, you know, they already saved according to them. But when 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 they see the kingdom and they get in front of Jesus, this is what they said they're gonna do. Now come on. Now let's let's think about this. Right? <laughs> let's right. think about this, right? Now, hey, this is what they say that they're gonna do in front of in front of Christ and his father. Hey, I don't want to give me Exodus 15 and 3. Come. Right? This they the say that, now hold on, hold on real quick. They say they are going to do this when they get in front of the king of kings. And the Lord of Lords. They're going to spin around in circles with skinny jeans on, loafers with no socks. And this is what they're going to do. Now, let's think if this, if with the characteristics that, uh, that the Bible gives us of the Most High God, let's see if he is dealing with this type of madness. Go ahead and read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 15, and verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. The Bible says the Lord is a man of war. Now you think, you, you think, now they always talk about spiritual warfare. How I'm going I'm to I'm be a warrior I'm a, and I'm going I'm to a, I'm a praise my way through this. Mm-hmm. Right? This is what Christians say all the time. You think the man of war is really, you think this is pleasing him? Do you think a man of war is pleased with you spinning in circles with tight pants on, gyrating in front of the church? That don't make no damn sense. It don't make a lick of sense, right? Hey, Salakia. Go ahead. Real quick. You, this this right here highlights the type of view that our people have of the Most High God. Man. Like, we really think the Most High is going to entertain your foolishness for five minutes. You see what I'm saying? Like, well, you know, a lot of our people look up to Obama. A lot of our people look up to LeBron James. If you go up to one of them and just bust out and dance, they're going to walk away. Yeah. <clears throat> and they regular people. They're going to walk the hell away. They're going to be like, what's up with him? And they're going to leave. And and But you think the most high God going to sit there and watch you and do, do some dance like this. Like, what does that even make sense? Uh-uh. Our people uh-huh. are crazy. And Salakia. God. So like, yeah, I, it's stupid because, I mean, you even think of the messengers of the Most High when, when people in the scripture saw them, they wanted to die. Right. You know, they were so afraid of them. And, you know, he he's so terrible and powerful, you know what I mean, that even his voice made people want to die. That don't even make sense. You think you're going to be prancing around in front, in front of the Most High? Right. That's an excellent point. Huh? Hey, hey let's Let's pull that while uh, me, uh, yeah. me, uh I, I was gonna say get Isaiah 63. Uh Judy, you had this on, on in, in, in the tuck? Nah, you good, go ahead. 63 and Read one from the top by right? because people a lot of people, first of all, they never most people have never read that scripture that Judah pulled. Most people in the Christian church have never ever read first Corinthians 69, or and if they have read it, they don't go into well damn. In the church, there's a lot of effeminate men. They should change. They don't think that way. They just uh-huh. read over the scriptures. All the things that Paul tells you not to do, which come from the commandments of the Most High, they just go past that, right? But not understanding, they say they're going to dance and scream and shout when your Yahweh come back. 
But yeah, how was Shah say he coming back like this? Read what you got out from the top. Huh, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, and verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This is this that is glorious in his apparel, tra uh, traveling in the greatness of his strength. Come on. I that spake in righteousness, mighty to save. Read on. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? And thy garments like him that treadeth the wine fat. Do that sound like a brother that's trying to dance? La -a. <laughs> La -a. That 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 sound like a brother whose father is about war, man. Right. <laughs> right. His father is about war because as soon as he come back, he coming back for straight destruction. Through the sword, man, de destroying the nations. He said, Wherefore? Are thou red and dying to They ask me, why, damn, why is garment red? They're going to be coming up dancing. It's going to be high with the sword. Right. Yeah, off. That's right. Right, because even Matthew taught you, or even Yahweh shall taught that lesson, man. In that day, many shall be going to say, Lord, Lord um, have we done miracles in your name and cast out demons? He's going to say, I never knew you. What is that? What? Yonatan, for the, if Yahweh Shai says to a brother, I never knew you, what does that mean for that brother? That means he's finished. He's finished. That's right. <laughs> he's finished. Right? Okay. So all that dancing and jiving, man, I, I get it. They trying to worship, right? But that's not the that that's a very effeminate spirit that our people uh are moving, right? Read on that. Huh. Verse three. I have trodden the wine press alone. And of the people, there was none with me. Hey, and he said he did it alone. He need no ride or die. He need no hit me out. Hey, I'm coming. Olo. Solo dolo. It's on and popping. Right? Read on. For I will tread them in my anger. In my what? In mm. my anger. No, in my dancing. Not. In my anger. anger. He said he's going to tread the people in his anger. Read on. And trample them in my fury. Go ahead. And their blood shall be. No, 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 no. I know. Their hugs. No, their hugs. I. And their blood, no, no kisses, ah. Huh? In their blood, they say, in their blood, come on, shall be sprinkled upon my garments, come on, and I will stain all my raiment. Go ahead. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. He said, the day of yeah, in your house heart is the, the this scripture is heavy. That is in your house heart. Your house heart is the day of vengeance. That's why Moses could write you a script and say, hey, man, the most high is a man of war. That's why right here. Then he killed the Egyptians. Then he just killed the, all the Egyptians. Yeah, this man, he's a man of war. He ain't playing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's a he lot. Said, for the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year and the year of so like it, and the year of of uh my redeem is to come, right? So his <laughs> redeem, he got bro, it, it's 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 gonna be a sad day for a lot of people in right. real willing. We're of that number in the chosen elect, man. Because your house, I said, he come back with vengeance in his heart, man. And that goes for the effeminate. A lot of people really believe your house was effeminate, man. All they could see is that one Jesus picture like this, the white boy with the with the halo. Yeah, on. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, Judas said. <laughs> That's how they see your house, man. Right, nah, man. He got he got war in his heart, man. He got vengeance on his mind, man. Huh. Hey, okay. Man, I, uh, I'd like to bring out the precept in Luke uh, nineteen, showing how I was austere. You got that? Oh, wait, 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 okay. wait! Before you get that, okay. nah, that's cool. That's cool. That's beautiful. Hey, matter of fact, get that. Read it now. We can read it now. That's cool. Come on. This is the book of Luke, chapter nineteen and verse twenty-one. For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Hey, let's get the definition of that. All right. 
Thanks. Let's get that definition. I'm going to let you break that down. Uh, but I wanted to get the definition for the people. Can y'all see the screen? Oh, God. God. So austere means God. severe or strict in manner, attitude, or appearance. Mm. So austere, right? Oh, let, let's, let's, let's think of this, too. It says of living conditions, a way of life, having no comforts or, lu or luxuries. Harsh, right? Now, it's all of these things. Like Christ was an austere man, right? Now, austere means severe, strict in manner, attitude, or appearance. So why did you bring that out, King? I brought that out to, just to let me back on Adamant's point that, you know, a lot of people think that Yahweh Shai is effeminate, and he's not. They Those that walk with him, that saw him, and this is not even in, in the top of his glory. This is when he came as a man. Even then, they feared him because he was austere. And I said, listen, I already know you ain't playing. Imagine them prancing around in loafers with no socks showing the ankles and stuff in front of him. And he would have slapped them out their loafers. And, and then to confirm that, he said, man, you already knew I was austere. You know I'm not playing. I'm not playing those type of games. It's not fun. I'm not here for a good time. Right. That's why he said he hated the world. You know? Right. And so if we are to be Christ-like, right, that, that's the goal. That's what the Christian church professes to be. Then what about what that dude was doing was austere or serious right. at all? Right. You know, they call so, it snapping on the devil's head. I... Huh? <laughs> God. So you know what I mean. If, if, if as we try to you know be like Christ, we need to kind of put that effeminate spirit down and you know do an inventory check of yourself and, and get become more austere for your your laws, man. Come. Come. Yeah. Come. Let's get Matthew ten and thirty. Uh, Mm. Give me Matthew 10 and 34, and then somebody else give me first Peter 2 and 21. Uh yeah, let's let's get that book, back off of Auto One Yaqua's point. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I am not, I mean, I came not to send peace, but a sword. Hey man, he came to send a sword, man. Most of I ain't coming back with lollipops, apple jacks, fruit roll-ups, and kisses, man. That ain't what he coming back for. But see, everybody says they're a Christian. But the definition of Christian is to be Christ-like. Mm. Right? Right. If all of those are Christians, are, mm, if those people that are in that church twirling around with ankle socks on, you know, tight pants and spinning in circles, gyrating in front of the pastor, you know, I don't see in a video of five gay men holding on to each other, shouting at the same time. If if you're a Christian, yeah. is that Christ-like? Was was Christ gyrating in front of the most like I don't I don't see no account of him dancing at all, actually. There's right. no such description. I've never I've never heard of it. Right. Then they try to say, oh well, you know, that's Dave, that's you know, David dancing before the Lord. Bro, what was David doing when he why was he dancing like that? And yeah. hey, you might got to get that out. Yeah, you got to get that. That's you got to pull that out. Pull it. Pull I'm going to pull it. That's pull a good point. We got to think yeah, about what was Dave, What did David just come back from to be dancing point. like that, man? What is y'all niggas So lock you for my language. What are y'all doing that make you have to do that? What are you, what are you coming back from? That you are dancing like that, you can claim that what you're doing is because from the account that I read, it wasn't no rehearsal. Because let's think about it. Anybody who's been in the church, there are dance moves to shouting. There's not no, there's not no uh 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 you're not just going crazy and whatever happens, happens. A lot of this stuff is choreographed. I can go, I can go to a couple uh I can go to a couple of uh, different church videos where they're doing the same dance moves. But was was David doing that? Let's get that second Samuel 6 and 14. Whoever got it. Come on, I got it. This is the book of 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 14. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. 
and David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Mishal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. So like it real quick. Uh -huh. let's, let's jump to the previous chapter, right? Okay, Carl. Yeah, let's yeah, see. Cool. Let's see what happened right before this event, right? Because that's right. a that's a great event that they'll go to and they'll say, David dance, so I can dance, right? But let's look at chapter five. It says 2 Samuel chapter 5 and 17. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, mm -hmm. all the Philistines came up to seek David. And David heard of it and went down to the hole. Uh -huh. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of Yahweh, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into mine hand? And Yahweh said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. Verse 20 is the point. Uh -huh. And David came to Baal Perazim, and David smote them there. Mm. And said, the Lord have broken forth upon my enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore, he called the name of that place Baal Perazim. Ah, there you ah. go. So the Most High just delivered the Philistines into David's hand. He gave him a promise like, hey, I will surely deliver these people into your hand. And he did so. And David smote them there. So, the, right. so David is praising the Most High. For delivering his enemies into his hand. Right. As he said he would. So I imagine David going crazy. That's what I imagine. When yeah. I think about David leaping and dancing before the Lord. This wasn't some choreographed, you know, two-step that they have. This is not step in the name of love. Right. He ain't dressed up like a mom. Right. Yeah. He's not mm -hmm. miming, you know. Yeah, he's, he's doing that. <laughs> okay, he's not doing that. This is not David doing that. Right. David is ecstatic. You know what I'm saying? This man is worshiping God because the, the Most High delivered his enemies into his hand and he smote his enemies. So I imagine David going crazy. Like This is not something that somebody can, can copy. This is not something that David, David didn't say, oh, at church today, I'm going to do this two-step that I've been practicing and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do the skip to my loo, like, you know, that little move that they do, you know. Yeah. Hey, man. I'm not going. I'm, hey, he he ain't come up with this. this is something. This is something impromptu, man. Mm -hmm. David is praising the Most High. But why in the world can I go to five different videos from five different churches where Christians are doing the same two step? Same thing. The same thing. Speaking an unknown language too. Oh, oh you know, yeah. Now, hey, you know, should have bought a house. <laughs> Coming in the Chevy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A cool number top. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And we already we went through this a couple of weeks back about this unknown tongue. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But they're doing all of these different things. But but the what you're not even willing to go against your enemy. David smoked his enemies and asked the most high, would you put my enemies into my hand? David said, I hate them with a per he hated his enemies with a perfect mm -hmm. hatred. Hey, uh, that there's no effemininess there. With that statement, it's not there. Hey, even the women. Hey, let's let's go. Let's get another count with David. Let's All right, go. go to First Samuel eighteen. First Samuel eighteen. Yeah, and he starting at six. This is the book of First Samuel, chapter eighteen, and verse six. And it came to pass. As they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, from the what? From the slaughter of the Philistine, go ahead. That the woman came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing. Do you know what? I, singing and dancing. Hey, hey the women came hey, after the slaughter of the enemies, man. The sisters came out singing and dancing, man. And uh, hey, that's the support brothers need from the women, man. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, that's why David can jump up and dance because he's hey, singing and hey, keep going up, mm. singing and dancing to meet King Saul with uh, tabrets. With joy and with instruments of music, 
And then they came out with music and they was dancing and singing. Hey, hey, hey what they sung? What they sung? I keep going. <laughs> and the woman answered one another as they played, said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. They say Saul, hey, they were singing, Saul killed his thousands, but David is ten thousands, man. Uh, so you know, even our women didn't want no effeminate man. Right, yep. they was loving David for killing them tens of thousands, man. They was turning up. That's right. Um, they was turning up at the destruction of our enemies. But That's now right. our women want to be in the front, running the church. And, and and a lot of the time, our women is the enemy too, man. Uh, our own women in our household. Uh, and Salaki, I don't want. Uh, just harping on David, you know, brothers nowadays they do their little bachelor party in Vegas doing some weird stuff. David, what did he do to get ready for his wedding? He got he killed 200 people, <laughs> you know, got their foreskins and said, Huh, right? <laughs> if that's yeah. not manly, that's right, hey, man. Hey, we gotta think about it, man. We uh, we read the story of Joab, and 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 what was it when David was about to die? What he tell his son? He said, "Hey man, show thyself a man. Yeah, keep the I charge of the thing. Lord and his his laws, his statutes, and his judgments." Hey, but you remember what Joab did? You remember that? Hey, don't let him die in peace, yo. Uh, uh hey, don't let that man die in peace. Hey, hold on. Even on our deathbed, we was hey, we was austere men. Come. If, you, if you read it, come. So, like, you want that? You yeah, want that account? Go, go ahead and pull it. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 2, in verse, I'll start at 1. Go ahead. Now the days of David drew nigh, that he should die. Mm -hmm. And he charged Solomon, his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, mm -hmm. and show thyself a man. Hey, Salak, so hold on, wait. He said, be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. Let me... Let me get there real quick, all right, because I'm going to read along with you. Hey, man, I ain't going to hold you. When I first got into the truth and I heard this precept, mm -hmm. I printed it out and put it on my wall. Like, yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Hey, I swear, and it's going to go in my son room, too. It said, right. be thou strong and show thyself a man. What's the next punctuation mark that's right there? Period. No. Semicolon. Uh, semi oh, and this one, 16 and 11, is a period. Okay, calm, calm. Well, in my Bible, and I think in our two Bibles, it's a semicolon there. I mean, it's going to explain what he's meaning by show thyself a man. That's right. So if you're a brother in the truth and you want to know what a man is, right, don't let Eve tell you what their version of a man is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got to have a certain amount of money in the bank or you're not a man. You know, you got to look a certain way or you're not a man. You got to dress a certain way. You got to be a certain amount of gangster or you're not a man. This is what being a man is. Read. God. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses. Uh -huh. That thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest. And now wait. The church is not teaching you how to be a man mm -mm. because it said, as it is written in mm. the law of Moses. That's right. But wait, they tell you that the law of Moses is done. Mm. So, brothers, see, the Bible works so crazy. It don't make no sense. Yeah, the Bible yeah. is showing you that part of being, no, being a man is sticking to the law of Moses. That's right. That's your characteristics of being a man right there. So, as it is written in the law of Moses, what your pastor tells you that the law of Moses is done away with. But hey, man, all you got to do is shout. You can shout in the front of the church and gyrate, not keep any laws, and you still a man. No. No. Go ahead. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll start at three again. That's the top of three. Okay. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments. Mm -hmm. His judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the, in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. Go ahead. That the Lord may continue his word, 
which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. Mm. Mm. And that's a heavy statement too, Art, because that goes for you know our people, and you got to take care of your family and your kids. Right. All that goes back to the law, right? right? But a lot of our men are so effeminate; they don't they don't take care of their families, their kids, and, and even Paul taught you if you don't take care of your household, you're an infidel, man. Yep. Right. And actually, that's what they pushing now in all these movies and rap stuff. That's what I, that's what our rappers push. That's what our celebrities be pushing, man. Right, it's okay not to take care of your family, man. But the scripture says, if you if you don't take care of your family, you worse than an infidel, man. Mm. And and Yahweh just told, or David just told Solomon, "Hey, man, to be a man, and hey, you got to, hey, your children, make sure they take heed to the way too. That's right. Make sure they keeping the commandments. So to be a man, you also got to be teaching your children in the right way, which is the commandments, truly the only way, man. Right. That's right." That's, That's right. right. That is tough. That's tough. Now let's think. Of, let's let's read the next verse, man. David's on his deathbed, man. Let's think about this. Let's read this. Is David thinking about hugs and kisses and rainbows and Stacy Adam uh, loafers with no socks and skinny jeans and hugging people and kissing and, and loving your enemies? What is David thinking? Let's read. Huh, verse five. Moreover. Thou knowest also what Joab, the son of Zariah, uh, Zariah uh, did to me, and what he did to the two captains of the house of the host of Israel, unto Abner, the son of Ner, and unto Amasa, the son of Jether, whom he slew and shed the blood of war in peace, and put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins. And in his shoes, they were on his feet. Now, I'm not going to reteach the lesson. I don't want y'all all did a class on Joab uh, probably two, three months ago on a Friday night class. Kind of. so, go read that. All right. But David on his deathbed was like, yo, you remember what Joab did to me. You have to, you have to know the account to, to see like how our men was about order. Regardless of what it was, it was about order. Right now, let's read what he tells his son. Uh, verse six: Do therefore according to thy wisdom, and let not his hoary head go down to the grave in peace. And he said, "Man, don't let him die in peace, yo. Mm. You remember what he did to me, yo. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Now, now, let me tell you something. When we come into the truth, or I'm not even gonna say the truth." When we decide to pick up a Bible, regardless of whether, you know, whichever way we decide to pick up a Bible, whether we go into the Christian church or whether we thought, you know, we, we always had an inkling towards God, but we not according to knowledge and we really don't agree with the church, but we still going to pick up the Bible and read it. Whichever way you started picking up your Bible, right? We, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? We automatically turn to this love doctrine, right? Love everybody doctrine, hugs and kisses, right? Love your way through what your neighbor is doing to you. And when I say the term neighbor, I'm using that loosely, I'm using that on their terms, right? Mm -hmm. But David won't on that type of time, even on his deathbed, he was like, Yo, you remember what that man did? We good at doing this though. What David did, we do that. But we do it in wickedness. Mm -hmm. We we do it. Hey man, somebody somebody come after our homeboy. Hey, don't let him die in peace. Nah. Matter of fact, he don't get to live. His mama don't get to live either. Hey, his auntie don't get to live. In my hometown, I just heard about something going on where uh, a sister yeah. asked brother, "Yo, why y'all keep shooting them houses?" He said, "Cause we can't get him. He killed one of our homeboys and got off, and he skipped town. We gonna we gonna keep shooting until we get something." Mm. We good at that, but not in righteousness. Yeah. Right? But see, here's the thing, right? Everybody calls themselves Christians. Everybody calls themselves Christ like, right? Well, David's a man after God's own heart. His enemies couldn't, he didn't love his enemies through nothing. 
He wanted the blood of his enemies, right? Because you know what? David was Christ-like. Mm -hmm. Now, some of y'all going to get simple. But David was Christ-like. Let's find out. Let's see. Because if you Christians, you know, because you say you're Christ-like, let's get the precept to show what what how, what you're supposed to follow. Give me 1 Peter 2 and 21. Uh, this is the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. Go ahead. For even hereto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Leaving us what? An example uh -huh. that you should follow his steps. Hey, so was Christ somebody that's effeminate, gyrating? You know, no, Christ was too busy doing the work to be gyrating. Uh -huh. Hey, now there's nothing wrong with singing to the most high. Oh. The Bible tells you to make to make a joyful noise. You know, enough of us, I, I don't want to say this a, a couple of times. Enough of us don't do that. We don't. Because mm -hmm. we've 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 came from a place where they do one thing and not the other. Yeah. Right. The Bible says those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Where well, the law is the truth. I personally believe that the most high will rather your obedience than that sacrifice of praise that they call it. That's yep. what they call it in church. That's, what, that's, that's exactly what they call it. Sacrifice of praise. Yeah. Yep. You want that? Yeah, hey, it. read it. Go ahead. Go. Let's right. get it. This is the book, uh, I believe. Hold on, I'm getting it. It's First Samuel, uh, chapter 15, I believe. Yeah, 15, 24. Come on. Come on. Uh, it's should be. Uh, obedience is better than sacrifice, right? Is Oh, it's uh, 22. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15 and verse 22. Uh -huh. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Uh -huh. And to hearken than fat of rams. Hey, so the most high is rather that you obey than to give a sacrifice or to listen to his words or to, than to give him that, that, that fat of the lamb. Mm -hmm. He rather that we just listen in the first place than to give him a sacrifice for us not listening. Mm -hmm. Right? So I, I'm inclined to believe that the most high would rather you keep the law than to be gyrating and shouting and saying I'm praising God and screaming and crying. And, because guess what? In them churches, that's a lawless church. They teach that you don't have to keep that. You know what I'm saying? So you right. know, they want to get the sacrifice of praise, praise, right? But they're not keeping no law. I, I, the Most High, if you're gonna give that praise, he will rather that be coupled with him keeping his commandments. And hey, you know what's the craziest thing? Go ahead, King. You know what's the craziest thing? Uh, how, the, like Tyler Perry, right? Mm -hmm. He can go be a preacher, but in every one of his movies, he's a woman in a dress. Mm. Every one of his movies, he's playing a woman in a dress, but then he can go teach our people how to be a man. Like, right. that's acceptable. Like, like that's acceptable. And, and it's a perfect class, because uh, look at the month we in. Yeah. Pride, this is Pride Month where they gave us Juneteenth. Right. But they in Pride Month got the Pride damn mayonnaise. You got the Pride Oreos, cereal. Right. Every store you go in from Walmart, Target, Publix, whatever kind of grocery store you got, got Pride everywhere, man. It's just a feminist spirit all over this place, man. That's right. And it started a lot of times with our people. Our people dive right into that spirit. That's why a lot, a lot of our actors was all women at one point. A lot of great comedian actors. All played a woman, a, a female role. I never understood that. Yep. Or or a semi-gay role. Yep. Took the manhood from my people, man. Our people try to follow and emulate that, man. Yep. That's wild. Yep. That's, that, that's why, as we say, you gotta uh, put off that weak nature, man. You gotta let go of that. And we're gonna get that in a few. We probably, this probably gonna be like our last precept. All right. But I don't want uh Yaqua brought something out earlier. <laughs> Even the women was for the destruction of their enemies. Let's get an account of that.
Mm-hmm. Give me the book of Second Maccabees, chapter seven. Mm-hmm. Con, I'll get that one for you. Al. Okay, Con. And I don't even know where I want to start at, bro. Yeah. Oh, that's good. All right. Uh, do, I don't, twenty is the point, but I don't think I want to start mm-hmm. there. Uh, I'm here. What do you think we should start at, Yaqua? Mm. I want to get the why. Hold on. Uh, I mean, I'm... this is a powerful account, too. Like, yeah, the whole really... account is good. I mean, 20 is the point, though. 20 yeah. and written down is the point. Yeah. Let's just start. Uh, with can, I, I, could start I could start at verse 15. Okay. And you, can, you can give them the synopsis of the other, you know, of what happened leading up to this. Okay, calm. All right, so this is 2 Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 15. Afterward, they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Hey, yo, ah, slock you. Let's just read the first verse. Okay, con, that's fine. That's fine. All right, verse 1. It came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh. And we're tormented with scourges and whips. All right, so here go seven sons and their mo- and their mother, right? right? They were persuaded, or they were trying to. Somebody was trying to persuade them to eat swine's flesh, right? Which is against the law. But not only were they persuaded to eat swine's flesh, hey Amen. They gave them an extra little bit of persuasion, mm-hmm. which was to scourge them or torment them <laughs> with whips and scourges. Mm. Right, like not only if I'm tempting you with with uh, swine's flesh, I'm gonna help you make your decision. I'm gonna beat you until you do it. Go ahead. Now, now that that's really the gist of it, right? Like, right here. Hey, somebody trying to persuade you or make you keep the law uh, 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 by the penalty of being beaten with scourges and whips. Go ahead. Go. You can go to fifteen. All right. Verse. Uh, I'm gonna jump down to eighteen. Actually. Instead okay. Come. Of- all right, verse 18. After him also, they brought the sixth. So now we on the sixth son. Uh-huh. Who being ready to die said, be not deceived without cause. For we suffered these things for ourselves, having sinned against our God. Therefore, marvelous things are done unto us. Uh-huh. But think not thou that, that takest in hand to strive against God, that thou shalt escape unpunished. Hey, man, don't think that you you lifted up your hand to rise up against the people of God, that you're going to be unpunished. This yeah. sixth son was not a punk. Right. Hey, but our people do not want no punishment for that white man. I... No, no, they don't. Yeah, they right. do not want no punishment for nobody that did any. Just forgive them. Bring them into the church. Let them right. shoot up the whole church. Let them shoot up Buffalo. They don't well, want no did. punishment for that. <laughs> right, and look at the spirit of the brothers in the Bible. Right, right. right. And that's the point. That's another reason they took this out of here. I don't care what nobody say. Okay. I think this story mm-hmm. and stories like it, right, yeah. was the reason right. they took this out. That's right. right. If you read this book, and these people are in slavery, and your your behind is in slavery, Salaki. So these people are in slavery, and and you are in slavery, and then you're reading how they didn't accept it. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, they won't with it. It ain't matter. I don't care what you do to me. I'm not leaving. This ain't this ain't cool to getting beat until he finally says Toby. Right. Yo, you won't have to beat me until I die. Right. You will never hear Toby come out of my mouth. Right. And I'm gonna save that last breath to put up a curse on your behind that. Exactly. Uh, I'm gonna save exactly. that last breath. <laughs> hey, this is why they took this out. Right, so now this sixth son wasn't a punk man, he wasn't effeminate, right? And what I don't want Yaquav said just was going to my point about how they think dancing and shouting is you know holding some type of weight, but the same person that they claim they're getting the shouting and dancing from, he wanted the blood of their enemy. But these same people who are acting like this man who was after God's own heart don't want the blood of their enemy at all. They want to forgive and take them with them into their kingdom. All right, let's keep reading. Con, but the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. 
But when she saw her seven sons slain with the space of one day, she bare it with a good courage because of the hope she had in the Lord. Hey, read that again. Read that whole thing again. That's heavy, man. But the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. Uh -huh. And hey, this is why we, Salahi, my bad. And this is why we bring out this account. This sister is worthy of honorable memory. We got to keep her memory alive. Sisters, mm -hmm. you got to keep this memory alive. This is the same fire that should be in you. Right. And it should be into your sons, man. Hey, listen. <laughs> I don't hear nothing about their father in this account. Am I, am I tripping? Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't hear nothing about the father in this account. Hey, you sisters that, that might be raising a son on your own. Read this, man. Read right. this. Right? Because you're teaching your son how to be a man by teaching him the laws of God. We read this earlier. Go ahead. That's right. Verse 21. Yay. Oh, Salakia. Uh, I'm about halfway through that verse. It says, for when she saw her seven sons slain with the space of one day, she bare it with good courage because of the hope she had in the Lord. Uh-huh. Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirit and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a, with a manly stomach. Oh. Uh. Said unto them, hey Salaki, I gotta jump in there on that. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's that's heavy. The writer yeah. is telling you, the writer is telling you, yo, she girded up her loins in the spirit, man. That's right, I that's right. So I, if a woman can do that in the face of death, after seeing all her children killed in the in the space of one day, yo, you have not gone through that. Mm -hmm. You have not gone through that, Israel. And if you have been through something like that. You know, God forbid you've been through something like that or or you've seen your children die or whatever like that. Just know that you can gather that strength from the Lord, man. Why not? That's that's heavy. Dang. All right, Kyle, I'm going to keep reading. Hey, keep reading, Kyle. How about Kyle? It says, I cannot tell how ye came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life. Uh-huh. Neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you, uh -huh. but doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again uh -huh. as you now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. Hey, so he's like, hey, bro, you're going to live again. You're going to live again because you take taking out regard of your own self. You're not being selfish. Hey, because guess what? You're being an example for others. You're not just thinking of yourself, man. You're thinking of, hey, the laws of God, man. Hey, and you went down for the laws of the, of the most high. Right? That's right. Um, that's right. What other way? That, that's the manliest way to go out. That's right. Man. You stood on you stood on your Howard's laws, man. Knowing that he'll come back for you. And hey, let me get a precept out real quick. Okay, that point. First Maccabees 2 and 50. Get that out around real quick, Bob Kishan. Uh, uh, this is the book of First Maccabees, chapter 2 and verse 50. I wanted to bring this up earlier. <laughs> Good. Um, now, therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. They said we got to be zealous for the law and got, give our lives. If you're going to give your life for something, you can't be effeminate about it. That's right. You're going to fall in pressure. If you're effeminate, you're going to fall in pressure. It's a question I don't want. Go ahead. For that video that we just watched with the dude twirling and, and, and high-stepping on his tippy toes oh, with, with his ankles showing and no socks with tight pants on, right? If Dylan Roof was to walk in that door right there with that brother Give his life for the sisters that are in that church. Yeah, I, I, I would hope so, Ak, but you know, I don't know. Uh, he might be screaming in that. You know, you, he might run. He might run up out of that thing, man. You, yeah. I don't know. I will, I will hope so. Yeah. I will hope the dancing was a facade. 
<laughs> like, hey, 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 I'm gonna get a precept showing you that I, we know the answer to the question, but keep going on your point. Hey, hey, Salaki, on that <laughs> point, on that point, remember when Dylan Roof ran up in that church in uh Charleston? One of the brothers in there actually tried to stop the killer from killing his grandma. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Israel, y'all gotta think about this, man. That's the way you going out. Like, if your mind state ain't already like I tell my people, I tell my kids all the time, if somebody come in here. That's my job. That I, I live for this reason. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I live for this. Like, if that happens, all praises to the most high that I had an opportunity to stand in the gap for my family. If you don't have that spirit, man, you're not moving the right way. That's what I'm saying. your point, I don't want. No, you got it. Bring out that precept. Hey, hey, let, let, let's get the precept. So, to, to the question that I was asking was with dude gyrating on his tippy toes. Spinning in circles like Michael Jackson, or uh, 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 what's that song on the doing the Man in the Mirror uh, song he did? Right. When he was, you know, no socks, yeah. all of that. Will he protect these women? Let's see, because I don't know. Looking at him, I would say no. But let's see what the Bible say, um, brother Ahuman. Give me Sirach nineteen and twenty nine. We're gonna go back to that uh, that precept and. Uh, or the second Maccabees. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 19, verse 29. A man may be known by his look. Read that again. A man may be known by his look. I'm not trusting you with my wife's life. Oh, I ain't trusting with my wife, but for them and that, he may, but for mine, yeah, I, nah. <laughs> <laughs> not right. dancing in that bit like that. I. Nah, la -a. I'm not trusting that you can turn it on and turn it off. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm not trusting that you could just, now you just finished prancing and then now you just a man. I don't trust that. Yeah. Nah. You either, you a man all the way or you not a man at all. Mm. You see what I'm saying? I know all these brothers on the screen, something pop off with, hey bro, look, we gonna look at each other, hey bro, look. It is what it is and we gonna right. get to it. Right. Right, I ain't, I ain't. Hey, look, in the world we used to do a whole bunch of wickedness, right? I ain't gonna lie. Hopefully, my mama not watching. But hey, man, I, I remember in the world, man, we was about to kick this dude door, and we was outside about to kick it in, like. And then next thing you know, brothers like, hey, you think we should do this? Hey, bro, you sure? And you know what I said? Nah, all y'all scared. We not even about to do this because we about to get caught. I'm, I'm good. Uh. Right. <laughs> Hey man, I'm not trusting in no scary brother ready to throw down when it's time to throw down, man. Huh. See so what I'm Salakia, saying? Go ahead. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up, Salakia. Hey, yo, that's a crazy question. That, that, that's all. <laughs> yo, you can't. You're not going into that. That is not for this uh, platform, man. I don't hey. know. If you're trolling. I don't. Hey, know. you call. Hey, who up? If that's the sister, call in tomorrow. Let's ask that question tomorrow. Oh, hey, but you know what? I know who this is, yo. I'm putting you in timeout because I know who you are. That's, hey, because guess call? what? On Monday, we caught y'all on your other show trying to bait us into your show where you were talking about us. And then you, I got the screenshots where you purposely said you was acting an uh, Israelite, you was acting like a Christian. To throw mm. off our teaching, I caught y'all last week. Hey, we oh. we ain't even gonna we ain't even gonna dignify them enough to get them a response. All right? Hey, mm. hey, that's all. That's what I'm. That's what I'm going with. That we know who you are now, so it's over. It's that's a wrap. Out of there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, Salaki, Salaki, on your last point though, right? On yes. your last point, you know that be, moving like that and presenting yourself a certain way goes a long way towards your wife respecting you. And your wife being like, you know what? I can follow them. I can follow. If this brother tell me to do something, I trust it. Right? And that's it. Uh, the brother Judah told me something powerful the other day, man. You know, the Feast of Tabernacles is a heavy feast. Mm -hmm. It's a heavy feast day because guess what? You trusting the men that's around you to support the camp and to, and to lock down and secure the camp. And you can't really experience that in this world because you kind of leaning on the police and you kind of leaning on your neighbor yeah. and you kind of leaning on your homegirl. But when you out there in that tent and you hearing them noises at nighttime, it's just you and that man that's in that tent with you. 
Mm-hmm. So we are depending on Israel to raise up powerful men that can lead their household and discipline their children. That's right. That's real. That, hey, that's right. That's right. Now let's let's keep going on that precept. So it says a man may be known by his looks. So I can look at you and tell whether you're a man or not off the rip. Exactly. Go ahead. And one that has understanding by his countenance. And see, it said that Christ left us an example. Mm-hmm. And we should follow his steps, man. You can tell when a brother understands. You see what I'm saying? By his countenance. Go ahead. When thou meetest him. Go ahead. A man's attire. A man's what? Attire. Is what? A man's attire. Go ahead. <laughs> And excessive laughter, laughter, and gait show what he is. Hey Amen. It says a man's attire, his laughter, and his gait shows what he is. Mm-hmm. Let's get the definition of the word gait. That's right. And hey, I didn't understand how much words meant something until I came to this camp. I swear I did. I swear right. I did. Try to get the definition. <laughs> you know, you think sometimes you can just you understand what they're saying by context of the of the of the of the precept, the words, yeah, kind of or right. the sentence. You feel me? But no, you got to look these up, man. Look at this. Gates, a person's manner of walking. So you cannot tell me you in these Christian churches switching mm-hmm. to a man of God. Uh, so, like, I got a precept for you. Read it. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 3 and verse 9. Mm-hmm. The show of their countenance do witness against them. Yeah. Mm. And they declare their sins as Sodom. Mm. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. So, so they don't even hide it. They ain't oh, even hiding it no more. Like, right. you see <laughs> your gate. The way you see in your gate, you a sodomite. And it, it, they'll them as a witness against you. That's right. So, you know, that's a perfect precept to line up with that. Hey, that's why brothers back on the street corners. Hey, I can read your spirit. It's in your spirit. Yeah, yeah that's you, right. <laughs> you, you got that excessive, you got that excessive gait and laughter. Mm-hmm. And that 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 are tight. Yeah, man. We, we can read that spirit. It's feminine, man. You yeah. gotta tighten up. You gotta yeah, bird man. up, man. I'm gonna Good. tell you what's another the feminine spirit, yo. And we're not gonna get into it. We've done enough classes on this. Not taking correction well mm-hmm. is an offending spirit. Okay. Because a lot of men, we can take correction, a calm mm-hmm. out. They calm. That's it. That's that's it. You see what I'm saying? Giannis has had to get on me a couple of times. And you know what? I calm. You know what? I'm, I was reflecting on my own stuff and I did peep that. Calm. You know what I'm saying? But the feminine brother, he can be as manly as he wants to be. On the you know the way he acts, hey, that's right. But as soon as you correct him, hey, but 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 nah, he didn't mean. Even he even if guess what? Even if the correction didn't even really apply to you, I could take that correction and still check myself every once in a while. I'm like, hey, yo, am I doing this? Nah, all right, good. Am I doing this? Hey, you kind of sort of, hey, you kind of, all right, hey, man up, straighten up. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, that's another feminine spirit not being able to take correction, yo. Uh, like I don't want Yakov said, not taking care of your family and your kids. That's an effeminate spirit. That's right. Hey, when and I think we're gonna we're probably gonna have to go into this again. To these type of subjects, you can you can you can do a multi-part series on these subjects. Yeah, it's black. You know <clears throat> hey, you can you can tell a man by the way he walks and the way he talks and how he what he wears. You can tell these things, right? Mm-hmm. Let's keep going. Let's let's keep going in that second Maccabee spirit. I mean, uh, precept, because the sister was was a man. She she is to be honored. Her memory is to be honored, right? Because she spoke to her sons in her own language, right? Exhorting her sons. You know what I'm saying with what's going on. Go ahead. We can probably stop that. Uh, I was at verse twenty two. Okay, come. All right. Uh, actually, I read 23 as well, but I'm, I'm going to read 23 again. Okay, come. 
It says, but doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generation of men and found out the beginning of all things will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again. Go ahead. As you now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. Go ahead. Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech, Willis the youngest was yet alive did not only exhort him by words, but also accursed him with oaths, with oaths, that mm -hmm. he would make him both a rich and a happy man if he would turn from the laws of his father. So, hey, he said, while the youngest was not yet alive, Antiochus, he exhorted him with words. The mother just exhorted him. Now Antiochus is trying to exhort him, and he assured him with oaths. Hey man, look, hey yo, I, I promise you, I'm gonna make you a rich man and a happy man. All you gotta do is eat this pork. Hey, brothers would have shook right there. <sighs> hey, no, that's right. Brothers would have shook right there. Hey, brothers' morals go out. Hey, brothers' morals go out of the window for less. Okay. You had that fine sister, body mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. You know that she don't slept with another brother. Mm -hmm. You know, you know the brother that she dealt with. Yeah, but she's fine, man. I don't know. I got to have her, yo. Yeah, right. I got to have her. Mm. Right? Hey, man. The brother, the brother that she dealt with is close to you. Hey, man. Hey, man. You know, um, I got to have her, yo. Like, hey. Brothers. Hey, look. Brothers, Mars go out of the way for, for less. Antiochus is promising this brother, hey, I'm going to give you riches, man. You're going to be a happy man. Just, mm -hmm. just eat this pork, man. That's all you got to do. Just eat this pork. Go ahead. Con, verse 25. Uh -huh. But when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. So and now we, he's trying to he's trying to exhort the mom to counsel right. him against mm -hmm. the laws of God just, just to save his life. Right. Now that's showing hey sisters, you gotta be strong too. That's right. You gotta be ten toes down for this. Period. Hey man, me and Yonatan, and uh, it was me and Yonatan, a couple other people at First Fruits. We was talking about this this particular brother, who was he was in the truth, and he used to he 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 used to rhyme and he used to rhyme about how he would never sign these contracts of Esau. He could spit too. Mm -hmm. He had a real he had a real talent. He could have gotten signed to anybody. And he used to always talk about how he would never take Esau <clears throat> contracts. And as soon as them contracts got in front of his face, he is no longer in the room. Hey, mm -hmm. what did he said on next Friday? He right. said, I was gone. <laughs> he was gone. <laughs> that mother was out the door, man. Good. Hey, right. man. He out of there, man. Right. And look, now, he now, wasn't now. facing death. As far Why as you we facing know. death? As far as we know, he wasn't facing death. Hey, man, now he's part of... Hey, the Kundalini, the Kundalini energy, the five dots of health. Mm. You know what I'm saying? All these different things, Khan. Right. All these different things. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, hey man, I could go for days, bro. But now the king is exhorting this brother's mother, or, or into exhorting his son against the law to save his own life, man. Keep going, Khan. Verse 27, or Salaki, verse 26. And when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. Now, hey, <laughs> she said, yeah, I, I'll do that. Yeah, I'm going to counsel him. Yep, so is. I'm going to counsel him. Go ahead. Right, right. <laughs> but she bowing herself towards him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in her country language on this matter. O oh, my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months, nine months in my womb, and gave thee suck three years, and nourished thee, and brought thee up unto this age, and endured the troubles of education. Now, hey, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna get spiritual with this for two seconds. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a a, a, a captain Aharon. I gotta I gotta be spiritual with this one right here, right? <laughs> hey, he said, she said. Uh, oh, my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb and gave thee suck three years. Hey, I'm gonna be spiritual. Off, this is an offshoot. We're gonna take a little exit. We're gonna get back on the highway. 
We're going to take a little detour. Hey, man. Brothers A hey, says, hey, she gave him suck for three years. Sometimes you got to stay on the milk for a little long, bit longer before you get up out there. That's hey, right. she gave, hey, because look, through that milk, you get wisdom. You see what I'm saying? You get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He said, I gave you suck for three years. You know what I'm saying? That's a good long time, man. I had you. That's, that's a walking child. That is that's a walking, walking child. child. With teeth. Yeah. I take, I've taken you from not being able to do nothing to crawling to your walking stage on the mill. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now you should have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding because you've been on that mill. And that's a cut for all of us who want to just come from the mill and start chewing steak. I mean, sometimes we got to stay on that milk to get that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So she gave him suck for three years and nourished him. All right, go ahead. I beseech thee, my son, look upon the heaven and the earth and all that is therein, and consider that God made them of things that were not. Wow. And so was mankind made likewise. Go ahead. Fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of thy brethren, take thy death. That I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren. Read that read that precept again. Con, verse 29. Fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of thy brethren, take thy death. That I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren. Mm. Hey, the Bible said, hey, bro. She was like, yo, I'm, yo, you said counsel me so you can say, well, yo, I got you. I'm, I'm going to do that. Yeah, I got you. Hey, yo, listen, take your death like a man. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, think about the most high who made the word of things that were not. He made the word out of nothing. And you going to fear this dude? Mm -hmm. hey, don't fear this tormentor. The most high made the word out of nothing, man. That's right. Take your death like a man. Give me uh -huh. Matthew 10 and 28. Huh. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hey, she's like, hey, yo, yo, you got to remember that the most high Yahweh made the world out of nothing. Meaning he made this dude too. Don't fear this dude. Hey, you need to fear your Howard. Take your death like a man. Right. Uh, Is the church thinking about these things? Is right. the church molding us to be that type of man? That's right? So Go ahead. Hey, y'all take over for a second. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and uh, we know how the Christian church basically <clears throat> based their doctrine on the misinterpretations of Paul. But, I mean, let's get something from Paul to say in the same thing. This is the book of First Corinthians, chapter 16, and verse 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men. That's right. Be strong. One of the captains, y'all can break it down if, if you God. Hey, Salaki, I'm gonna jump in there, right? Huh. We gotta be, we gotta gird our loins up, man. This is this is not the type of work. And I want to say this the right way, so I'm gonna say it slow. This is the type of work that at any point in time, they can turn on the YouTube, see my face on here, mm -hmm. and decide to release me from my job. Yeah. <laughs> they can find an old video that I recorded two years ago where I was breaking down the destruction of Esau, and they can use that out of context and say that I'm plotting a terrorist plot, and they can have me in prison. Right. You see what I'm saying? We right. gotta understand that the stakes are high, man. But we not concerned with that because our people are in the mud, and we will do anything to get our people out the mud. What did Christ say? He said that uh, greater love have no man than this: that a man laid down his life for mm -hmm. the okay. Every time you go to camp, somebody can pull out a pistol, man. That's right. Esau can pull up. Yo, Esau pulling up and going to churches, but what if he just start pulling up and going to street corners? Right? And it's mm -hmm. only by the spirit and power of your heart by the Shemiah Shah that that has not happened yet. That's right. Uh, hey, hey, I want to get uh, Matthew 5 and 10, man, because look what your Shah told us, man. Uh, hey, a lot of times we forget this scripture. 
and and like and I'm I'm on I'm on the spirit like I don't want to I don't want y'all are. I pray that this doesn't happen to brothers, but yeah, how wish I said, blessed is this man. Read that for me, y'all. Matthew uh, 10. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. They say you get your the kingdom of heaven is yours if you are blessed. I mean, if you are persecuted for righteousness sake, mm. that persecution can be anything. Your family, your wife, your kids, your job, brothers, sisters, being murdered. And that could be anything, man. Anything. Right? Read on that. Huh. So like, yeah, I just, I just skipped out. But I, I got it right now. All right. And it reads. Uh, Verse 11. Verse 11, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Re go ahead. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted the they the prophets which were before you. Amen. Say, say we got to go out like the prophets that was before us. Now look at Jeremiah. Look at John the Baptist. Look at John the Revelator. Look at Paul. Mm -hmm. Right? Look at Yahawashai. We got to go out just like them. And all of them went out with a non-effeminate spirit. That's the point. Oh. If you can take the persecution that you had no effeminate in you, man. You, you wasn't going around walking, twitching with the gate and the laughter, man. You didn't have that spirit. You had to have that austere spirit. You had to have the spirit of the brothers in 2 Maccabees chapter 7. Our women had to have the spirit of the mother of the second uh, of, the, of, the, of those brothers. Right. We had to be willing to give our lives for this law, man, and for Yahweh Shah, just how he gave it for, for us. Come right? Come So, like you, uh, <clears throat> To, to land me back on that, going back to 1 Maccabees chapter 2, we can read that next verse that we stopped off at at 51. Yeah. I'll start at 50 again. It says, now, therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law and give your... Matter of fact, I'm going to start at 49 just to show this is another man on his deathbed. So then once again, we got another account of a father about to die. And this is what he's telling his, his, his charge. Because we know, just like the uh, scriptures say, you know, the day I die is better than the day I come in. So this is probably the most important thing that he's ever said to his children, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 49. Now, when the time drew near that Mattathias should die, he said unto his sons, Now hath pride and rebuke gotten strength in the time of destruction and the wrath of indignation. Now, therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law. And give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Hmm. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. So shall ye receive great honor in an everlasting name. And then if you read on in the rest of that chapter, it start giving accounts of what our forefathers did. That's right. Know? That's why the things are written aforetime are written for mm -hmm. our learning. Come on. And, you know, oh. for the young brothers in Israel that don't have a father figure, man, listen, read these scriptures. Read the accounts of your forefathers to learn how to be a man. Right. That's you? right. That's right. Hey, I'm going to get a couple of more. You know what I'm saying? If brothers got more, we can keep going. Right? But I only got a couple of more. It's, this is a simple to the point that lesson. Brother country, that brother said a couple of more. A couple of more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. There's the brother from Florida. Right. <laughs> you know somebody from Florida call you country. Right, that's crazy. I ain't never been right. country in my life. But yo, listen, I got a couple of more. All right, hey, because we got to think about if Christ left us an example that we should walk out these steps. Let's think about the dudes he used to roll with. Yeah. Let's, let's, bro, yo, Soldier Jerry, stop. <laughs> they get, you know you're in the chat, huh? <laughs> right? Right. Let, let's let's think about the people that that Christ rolled with. We are gonna mm -hmm. get the story, and then we are gonna get the account of who he <laughs> was. All right. Give me uh, give me the book of Luke chapter 
22 versus 48. All right, I'm already there. God, that's God, crazy. Luke 22 and 48. Uh huh. But Yahweh Shai said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss? Uh huh. And when they were, when they were, Salakia, when they which were about him saw what should follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? Uh -huh. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Mm. Hey, man. So, hey, now mm. let, let's go to the book of John. Ready. Right. Chapter 18, verse 1. Let's see who Christ rolled with. Come on. We're going to read 1 through 10. And I got one last precept. So if anybody got any other precepts, let's get them in. I'm going to get my last one at the end. But I'm not hey, rushing. So Hey, hey Silaki, before you get that one, right, can we get can, let's stay in Luke 22? Go to 36. Right, look what your house I told the people. Uh, this is the book of Luke, chapter 22. Oh, you got it. You got it. You got it. All right. You good. You got it. In, in 36. Then said he unto them, But now he that has a purse and let him take it, and likewise his script. Mm -hmm. And when he that had no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. And if you don't got no sword, and you got to sell your garment, how can that be effeminate? What you need the sword for? Right. Come. Right. Hey, 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 them, them, uh, them J's you had in your closet that you ain't uh -huh. yet, and you got to sell them joints to go get the scrap. That was your house I just told that, you. That's what he said. Uh -huh. You got to <laughs> go sell them, go get them two, three hundred dollars back. You ain't warm yet, limited edition, and go get the scrap, man. Y'all know I get hey, it. Hey, I don't want. He he told him that, and then we read what happens afterwards. Exactly. And he was already scrapped. And he was already. He already had the sword on him. That's right. And, and you know what's so crazy? You know the brother wasn't going for the ear. You know the Roman. Uh, yeah. Right. 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 Things, they had their little ear out. He was probably trying to take that head. Of course. That's right. Yeah. Facts. Now let's get the account of what happened. Let's get John 18, let's start at verse 1. Come on, this is the book of John, chapter 18 and verse 1. When Yahawashai had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples uh, over the brook Sidron, where was a garden into which he entered and his disciples. Uh -huh. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Yahushai oftentimes reported, resorted thither with his disciples. Uh -huh. Judas, when having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, coming thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Uh -huh. Yahushai, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answer him, Yahushai of Nazareth. Yahweh said it to them, I am he. Now let's think about this thing real quick. Let's see, and we're not even gonna go on this. It's not even on this point. Let's just think about it, man. Let's think about the, the men that the church breeds and then the men that Christ breeds. God. Christ knows somebody come and look for him. He comes out and says, Yo, who you looking for? We're looking for you. Um, this, hey, I'm right here. Right. Here. right. <laughs> I'm right here. Right. Now, you know, the, the church always says, blessed are they who are persecuted for Christ's sake. They they bring this precept out. Persecuted for Christ's sake is when you can't put gas in your Bentley or you're not receiving tithes and offerings or whatever. Let's just say that they was doing it right. How many of them how many of them ankle sock penny loafer pants, capris wearing Three around the three. church? If a dude, if a dude came and like the power that be came into that church and said, "You're serving God the right way," we looking for you. And he said, "I am He." Ain't, ain't, ain't happening. Mm -mm. It's not happening. Christ wasn't dodging no smoke God. at all. He said, "I am He." Here am I. Go ahead. God. And he says, "I am He." Uh, then he said, uh, "I'll start. I'll start right here at five again." Then answer him, Yahweh Shai of Nazareth. Yahweh said to them, I am he. Uh -huh. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Mm. And asked he them again, whom seek ye? And they said, Yahweh of Nazareth. Yahweh answered, 
I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. Okay. That they may uh uh that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none? Uh-huh. And then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Hey man, the house I wrote with people who was ready to go. Hey, hey, it said he was ready to go in. Right? He said he was ready to go in. Hey, Simon Peter was ready to smite anybody. Right. You see what I'm saying? He was ready to go in. These are the people that Yahusha dwelt with. Yahusha wasn't walking around with no punks, man. Mm -hmm. People that were scared to do the work. Right. People that were scared to throw down that it was time to throw down. All right. This wasn't the type of brother that Christ was was dealing with. Right. So when it's time for you to go out here and do the work, you got to surround yourself with like-minded brothers, man. That's right. That's not a. Hey, that's not out here just for show. Then when it's time to throw down, when something get real, they're ready to run. This ain't the type of brothers that Christ rolled with. You see what I'm saying? This is the same brother that was ready to walk on water with Christ. Right. Let's keep it funky. Let's keep it real. I'm on the boat. The water's going crazy. When you read that account and you visualize it, bro, it was going wild mm -hmm. on the yeah. water. And then, hey, first of all, you go to Christ. Christ said, oh, ye little faith. Right? Hey, first of all, that's a whole nother story. But he said, oh, ye little faith. Then you ready to walk on water with Christ. Mm. You think about how, what's the word I'm looking for? I ain't going to say tough. But you think about the, 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 the personality traits of these men. That right. role with Christ for you to be ready to do that, man. And let's think about what the church is breeding. The church is actually breeding people to have no faith. Okay. Even though they, they they teach faith. In order to be a man, you got to have faith in the Messiah. That's right. <clears throat> right? Right. So Christ didn't roll with, with effeminate men. He was an effeminate man himself. His father isn't an effeminate man. You see what I'm saying? But what is this church breeding? Before I, I shut it down, anybody got anything else before we before we knock it out? Nah. nah. Hey, V.Y. McKellar, man, yeah, my allergy's going crazy. I don't know what's going on. I have no idea. Give me a second, Edges 14 and 14. Kind of Marty here. Hey, I'm going to start at 13, I Go ahead, King. It's the book of Second Edges, chapter 14, verse 13. Now therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. Comfort such of them as be in trouble and now renounce corruption. Uh -huh. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Cast away the burden of men. Put now off, it's like you put off now the weak nature. The first thing is first, brothers. Right? I'm glad you started at 13. That was beautiful. It says, set thine house in order. First of all, that's the first thing we got to do. We got to get a house in order. That's a hard task, yo. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think the brother Giannis is going to come out with a class that's going to go directly into that. You know what I'm saying? Most high willing. All right? Now, we got to set our house in order. That's first things first. Right? It says, now therefore, brother, set thy house in order and will prove thy people. A lot of us be scared. I ain't going to lie. I said it to myself, I'm like, yo, I be going at everybody, but like, whenever homosexuals come around, I be trying to think of what angle I'm going to come at them at. But the only angle to come at them is through the scriptures, whether they like it, understand it, believe it or not. Straight but up. the spirit bears witness, the spirit bears witness, and the person who's supposed to hear and understand hears and understand. Right. All right, but we're supposed to set our house in order, reprove our people, comfort such of them that's be in trouble, and renounce corruption. We're supposed to do that. Hey, Haran, give me Proverbs 31 and 8. Matter of fact, I might want to start at 7. Give me one second. These are all the characteristics of a man that, that we're supposed to be doing. All this is right. the book of Proverbs, chapter 31 and verse 7. Let him drink and forget his poverty. Now, Remember, go to verse 8, King. Huh. Open thy mouth 
for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Hey, listen. We're supposed to speak for those who can't speak for themselves. Uh, We're supposed to renounce corruption. Right? We're supposed to go out there on the streets and rebuke the, 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 the pastors that keep our people in a docile state. And they use our people. We're supposed to, we're supposed to go out there and renounce the, the politicians that eat up our people. We're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to speak for the people that can't speak for themselves. Right? These are all the characteristics of being a man. Right? And then it says, let go from the immortal thoughts. Mm -hmm. We got to stay in the spirit, man. Men, we got to stay in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, all we worried about is, yo, these sisters, these sisters, hey, man, yo, these sisters got to get in order. We got to get in order, too. Right. Uh, <clears throat> first and foremost. Now, the sisters ain't on point if they're not following us, following our lead as far as us getting in order. Right? No, they're not right. They're not on point. But we got to make sure that we in order, first and foremost, and set our house in order. Right? Go ahead. Keep going, okay. Go Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Huh. That's part of being a man. Huh. Right? This is you setting your house in order and, and renouncing corruption. All right. Let's keep going in second edges. I'm gonna read, four, read 14 again. <clears throat> it says, let go from thee mortal thoughts, cast away the burden of men. Put off now the weak nature. We got to put off that effeminate nature, man, that we've been taught. The nature that a hey, United States government and the Christian church, I think, are one and the same. And they've both taught us to be docile. Yeah. Man. We got to put away that weak nature, man. Huh. And the church, man, you are, you, are, you are a good man if you're soft-spoken and you sing in the choir and, you know, happy wife, happy life. You're not you're not rugged or or in any way, shape, or form, huh. and that's not what the Most High uh, uh, taught us to be. Huh. Salaki, I got a precept. Come huh. one second. When we looked up that yeah. word off still, I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up one more time just to make sure. It says of living in condition, a way of life, having no comforts or luxuries, harsh, right? Hey man, hey, sometimes this is what life is gonna be, and we gotta be prepared for that. Because mm -hmm. when it's time for us to get up out of here, man, hey man, life's gonna be harsh, man. People don't believe Jacob Trouble is real. Yeah. And these luxuries that we have, man, we ain't gonna have it too much longer, yo. Right. Mm -hmm. And are you gonna be able to survive and lead your family when that time comes? We gotta be, we gotta think about these things. Go ahead, King. Con. All right, so um, going back to uh, to Maccabees, because like like I don't want to just say it. Listen, that just the same way in, in the so-called New Testament, the government and the church is one and the same, man. And so you're going to see this this same thing is repeating itself in the time of the Maccabees, right? So just we, we, we talked about how what Mattathias told his sons, right, and on his deathbed to be like men, follow the covenant of our fathers. Let's go right here to 1 Maccabees chapter 3, and I'll start at 20, right? Mm -hmm. It says, they come against us in much pride and iniquity to destroy us. Now, we know that's that same thing's happening right now. You know what I'm saying? This government, they cover fields, right? And our wives and children and to spoil us, verse 21. But we fight for our lives and our laws. So that's what we fought. That's what the Maccabees was fighting for. That's mm -hmm. the whole purpose of that. And what happened when the enemy saw um, them fighting for their lives and their laws? Go to uh, chapter 4 and verse 35. Uh -huh. It says, Now when Lysias saw his army put to flight and the manliness of Judas' soldiers and how they were ready either to live or die valiantly, he went to Antiochia uh, and gathered together a company of strangers, having made his army greater than it was, he proposed to come against Judea. So you see, he said, yo, these cats are manly. They ready to fight and die for their loss. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so that's what uh, was considered manly then, and that's what's considered manly now. And see, your enemy knows that. The same way these Edomites knew, so listen, this is a manly thing. That's why they destroyed every 
every time that our people try to get together and try to uh, unify ourselves and, and get a code of ethics, it wasn't due to the law, statutes, and commandments, so that's why it didn't work. But he's afraid of that. You know what I mean? And what he does, last one, same thing. You can see that again in Second Maccabees chapter thirteen and verse uh, eighteen. Yeah. Okay, and it says, "Now when the king had taken a taste of the manliness of the Jews, he went about to take holds by policy." So you see back then when he said, yo, they, they, they doing too much. They're too strong. You know, but let's change the laws and the policies so that way we can stop this, this movement. You know what I mean? That's the same thing that they did then. That's the same thing that they're doing now. And, you know, you can keep reading on that. You're like, okay, it's in March towards Bessura, verse 19, the March towards Bessura, which was the stronghold of the Jews, but he was put to flight, failed, and lost his man. So even though he put in forced policies to try to do that, we were ready and we got with her because we were fighting for our lives and our laws. That's what right. it means to be a man. I you? Hey, right. calm. Hey, the brother was bringing it out. That, that's cold. You got something, hey. y'all? Nah, I'm good. Calm, calm, calm. Right. You got anything? I don't want y'all quiet. Yeah, kind of just, just to that point, uh, what the brother was saying, what, what you brought up uh, about the Christian church and the government being on one accord. Mm -hmm. If you think about it right, the government don't want to see the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans back up ever again they don't want to see us up and the christian church is telling us not to keep the law so if esau and the government is doing everything to oppress us and the christian church is teaching us not to keep the laws we can never come back to our state in this world we can never come back to our wifely position on this earth because we got two enemies our own people the pastors and Esau, the government, trying to That's keep right. us down, man. That's right. Um, all these scriptures is talking about fighting for our laws. Our people, we have nothing to fight for or nothing to stand on. Mm -hmm. The first thing you need when you're building a nation, you need law and order to follow. God. What the people are going to follow? Right. But our people is being taught, do not follow no laws. That mm. means they don't want us to be a nation. So we have nothing to stand on. We're not grounded on nothing, man. That's right. And that's why we will continue to be destroyed as a people. Kill each other, sell drugs to each other, pour each other out. Women don't care about the children. Men neither. No love in the community, right? It, it, it will never change unless we have some law and structure and order to stand on and be grounded on, man. And once we have that law and order through the scriptures and fight for it, hey, man, the most high is with us, man. Come on. All the way the most high is gonna be with us. But it gotta start with coming back to these laws and the faith in Hamashak and how shine getting rid of that effeminate spirit. Come on. Come on. And that's why they uh man, that's why that's the real reason why the chief in the uh chief priest and Pharisee David was against Yahweh Shai. Because we know John 11 and 47 says, then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said. What do we for this man doing many miracles? If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. Because see, mm. they were just they were just worried about hey, the government they chipping us off, we we running everything, and they they, they leaving us alone. But if men start following Yahweh Shai and being true men and being austere like him, oh man, well, we got a problem. They gonna mm. they gonna stir up the pot. Hey man, and, and that's that's all the way around the board, man. A lot of us like to be austere in certain things, but not be austere in all things. You know what I'm saying? God. Hey, that that's hey. Sometimes you got to be austere with your wife. Right. Oh, people don't want to hear that one. God. Right. right. Of course, we got to be austere with our men. Right. And then we got to be austere with the brothers that's next to us. We got to check each other. You know, right. we going on. You know what I'm saying? I try to be the brother where. Hey, before I go off, let me let me call somebody and holler at them real quick because hey, we all men at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? We all fall short, right? Wow. We got we got to check that effeminate spirit at the door. So that means you got to call somebody to, and tell them how you feeling right now it's for them to be like, hey, bro. Hey, yo, you yeah, you going off, brother. Like, for real, you going off. Okay. Check it at the door, man. Check it at the door. Don't don't be one of those people that uh, 
enable your feminine spirit. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Right. right? Hey, man, let's put aside that weak nature, man. Okay. Uh, as men, man, we in the last days, man, and, and, and the pot is being stirred as we speak. That's right up. Okay. And we got a lot of brothers against sisters, sisters against brothers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's a lot of quarrels going on in Israel. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, we got we to gotta put aside that weak nature and start becoming men. Search these scriptures and get a counts of what real men are. And we got to do that. All right? Because, hey, amen, no effeminate is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's right. Oh, come. Hey. That's hey. a lot of that. Come. We see right there, because just talking about holding each other accountable, in, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 20, probably like five through eight, you could see, look, they were getting ready to go to war, right? Yep. And he said, look, bring them priests. They said, look, everybody who's scared, look, you got a house you worried about? You gotta go. Go, just go do that. You worried about your woman? Get up out of here. But yeah. So I'm going to just read one verse from that to just, that sums it up, right? This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter, uh, chapter 20 and verse eight. But I implore everybody watching this, man, read that this whole chapter. You can see the type of people that we don't need it. Man, not in this this army. Like I don't want to always say, listen, we are your warrior class. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if you're not trying to be about that, go do something over there with the women or something. I don't know, brother. But to be over here, this is what you got to be be worried about, right? Verse right. eight. <clears throat> and the officers shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is there that is fearful and faint hearted? Let him go and return to his house, lest his brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. You know, so the saying right there, like, look, it, one that that fear is contagious. You know, in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter seventeen, verse twelve and thirteen, teacher, that fear is real. Fear nothing but you, like you, um, betraying the succors that the truth really gives you in your mind. You know, it's a, it's a, you abandoning all logic. But that's why we got to be on each other and check each other. Hey, bro. I'm seeing a little little fallacy within you. Check that, because we in war out here, and I can't have that rub off on me. Mm. Are you? All right. Hey, beautiful, beautiful. Hey, two things. The brother, well, I don't know. Dirty Varmint said, what does it say? No feminine gets into the kingdom. Go back to the beginning of the class. That's the first piece that we brought out. Mm -hmm. I got it again. Well, let's, let's just go ahead and get it. Let's just go ahead and get yeah. it. Yeah. This is the book of First Go ahead. Chapter 6 and verse 9. Bring it out. <clears throat> know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. And it's going to talk about who the unrighteous are. Go ahead. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Nor who? Nor effeminate. Uh huh. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves. Nor covetous. Nor drunkards. Nor revilers. Nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God, and one of these things are called the effeminate. God. Right. All right. Now. I hope you understood that. That's fine if you don't believe in the Apostle Paul. Guess what? If you have a question, you go to this right here. All right? Whether you're sincere or whether you're trolling, you call 605-472-5308. You put in the code 650-372-POUND each Friday night. And after the questions, I mean, after the lesson, when the elder asked, does anybody have any questions? Then you ask your question, all right? But we're not going to go into anything that's not pertaining to the class from Monday to Thursday. There's a whole class for that, which is Friday after the lesson is over. Whether you're sincere, whether you're scoffing, whether you want attention to your channel, whether you want to do a debate to get some extra followers, whatever you want it to be, I'm not saying that that's you brother or sister or 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 gentile you could be in the chat as long as you want you can do whatever you want but monday through thursday we're doing our lesson we're getting up off of here 
And on Friday after the lesson, you can ask any question you want. If you want some, you want to do a debate, send us an email to sons of thunder Israelites at gmail.com. It is worthy to, to do that, then we'll 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 do that. You know what I'm saying? But if it's if it's foolishness, we're not giving it the time of day. All right. So hey man, that is the class. Come. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys was edified by it. All right, hey amen. Sons of Thunder Israelites are growing. All right, we're hey, we're taking new prospects. The next prospect phase is about to start very soon. So if you want to be a prospect in Sons of Thunder Israelite camp, only to do the work, not to hang out with your favorite teachers, not to get a t-shirt, not to you know get some clout on Facebook. If you're ready to do the work. Send an email to sons of thunder Israelites at gmail.com. Gives your name, your number, and your location. And most high willing, you're able to uh, get into the next prospect phase, which will be starting soon. SOT has camp spots in Atlanta, North Carolina, Alabama, Ohio, DC, and the brother Yaquab is in Fort Myers, Florida. So if you're in that area or surrounding, send us an email to sons of thunder Israelites at gmail.com. And if you're not in any of those areas, but you want to be a part and push the word with us, send an email to sons of thunder Israelites at gmail.com. And most high willing, we, we can get you into the next prospect phase. All right. And with that, all right, we are the sons of thunder Israelites. There's a heart's prayer and desire that all Israel might be saved. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.